Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, I wanted to kind of delve into some rocketry stuff here. A lot of you guys really enjoyed the last rocketry video where we made a pretty small rocket engine on this little set here. A lot of you guys asked about this set as well, and it's not anything I'm selling or anything, it's just something I made on my lathe years ago. But these little rocket engine tubes here, inner diameter of just under half an inch. But I want to step it up. I want to build some bigger motors. <laughs> so what I have here, much larger rocket tube. You can see the, the size difference of this stuff. Huge difference. This will be totally fine for handling the pressures of uh, K and S B rocket propellant. Now the only problem is, obviously this die set will not work. So what we need to do is try to machine up a new one that will hopefully, you know, have basically work exactly the same way, but for the larger diameter tube. So we'll need to make it. The coring section we might, oh, need to glue that back in. Coring section we can probably get away with. That's probably just about the right size to put a proper core in a, a engine length of about that. But what we need to do is create new bases for each and obviously a new coring spindle and new ramrods. So that is going to be the goal. Now I got here a big old shaft of aluminum. Wife likes to hit me with this over the head when I don't do the dishes or if I leave a spot. And uh, so we're going to cut this to size, machine our nozzle press, and then we're going to need to machine up some, uh, some fancy presses here. Let's get to it. Now it's also currently colder than a witch's tit here in the garage, so uh, if you see my videos turning, <laughs> see my videos, if you see my fingers turning progressively more purple throughout the video, I'm, I'm not dying, it's just cold as shit. Got a fresh blade in the hacksaw, and we're just going to need some cutting lubricant. Going to use some of the KY spray on. Ooh, goes kind of everywhere. And we don't need a particularly long piece here because this is just going to be for uh, the geometry of the nozzle. So just over here at the world's crappiest metal lathe. Just going to chuck it up and face off the ends here. Kind of right at the capacity of these tiny jaws. So fresh off the lathe we got this jobby here which is measuring just under three quarters of an inch, three thou under, which is just about perfect. You can see we got a, won't even fit in on that side, but nice snug fit, really snug fit. Ugh. Still need to polish it up a little bit. I gave it a preliminary hand polishing job, but I'll, I'll need to give it a, a little bit of a better hand job, get it, uh, get it nice and mirror finished. This, this was at one time mirror finished, but I guess the, uh, the grog and bet night has slowly kind of eroded that. So what we're going to do now is form this section here where you have a conical, basically the exhaust cone, the conical exhaust section, and then just a small core to get the propellant grain started. So here's our fresh part off the lathe. You can see we have the uh, divergent section of the nozzle. Basically what we're doing here is an inverse of what we're going to create inside of the tube. This is going to be a 5 16 nozzle it's going to create. Now some of the other ones I saw online use a, uh, a quarter inch nozzle but uh, being a little conservative I don't want to build that kind because obviously the smaller the hole the greater the pressure in the casing. I want to keep this a little on the safer side being that I haven't worked with this, uh, this size engine before. Now we got to make the part that meets up here to create our convergent nozzle section and then we'll just make a uh, like a ramrod just to press the rest of the propellant in and the bulkhead. So nothing, nothing too crazy left. So right now I've just got the nozzle forming ramrod on the lathe here. Gonna drill out the back of it with a uh, 5 16 drill bit. Now that drill hole is also going to give me a place to put the uh, dead center so I can actually turn this because you know, without support on the end there, I'm not going to be able to get an accurate cut depth. It'll deflect and basically just 
totally screw the whole thing up. So drilling this hole, I'll be able to put the dead center in there and then just turn, turn the OD down to uh, just under three quarter. Just giving my shaft a good rubbing with sandpaper. You don't want to use dry sandpaper on your shaft. That would just be torture. Yeah, she looks pretty good. Should I polish my shaft now? I'm gonna polish my shaft, why not? Make it look nice and pretty. The tip of your shaft is where it's important to get a good polish. Alright, not perfect, but pretty damn good looking. I don't really care about the end of it. That's just gonna get hammered on and beaten. So, I'm real happy with that. That looks good. You can see the shaft got a nice polishing. Then I also polished the base here. And you can see where they meet. You get that nice traditional looking rocket cone. So here we have our convergent nozzle, or what will form our convergent nozzle. And on the back here we have our divergent nozzle. So here the gases are converging, here they're diverging to give you a larger surface area to act upon. You know, physics and whatnot. And just wrapped up the final piece on the lathe here. You can see the lathe got a little off kilter mid-cut a few times. Obviously not operator or no, no way it could be that. So one other thing I did just to kind of save time and you know not be redundant I'm gonna be actually reusing this spindle so I'm gonna do the primary uh, pressing and everything on here and then I'm just gonna core the rocket on this spindle and that should provide pretty adequate spindle length alright so at this point all our toolings done just cut a little section out here and basically we're gonna get that on there press our our nozzle first then our composition and then we're just going to take it on here, core it, because we're going to do the uh, K and SB propellant. So you can see I cut the tube longer than the core. That way I can have room for a, a clay bulkhead at the top. I'm not really sure how much I'm going to need for this size rocket. Going to do it by feel here. Oh, that is beautiful. Holy shit. Look at that. Just about to whip up a batch of propellant here. Throw the face shield on and two extinguishers on standby just in case. They, they wouldn't actually put out the propellant, but uh, if anything else were to catch on fire. Now you can also see I left out the red iron oxide. And the reason I did that is because this is a new engine and I'm not sure what kind of pressures are going to be generated in there so I want to give it a test without the red iron oxide first just to make sure it doesn't blow up so at this point it's fully melted looks like a huge old load of cake frosting <laughs> what'd you think I was gonna say alright so at this point I'm just gonna kill heat and let the propellant begin to uh, set up and once it gets to a nice workable consistency, we'll load the engine. Alright, so at this point the propellant's nice and workable, not really sticking to the hands too much. I already loaded some in here, so I'm just going to ram it down. My... And then I'll put it on the coring tool. Give it a nice core. And right there, make contact with the ram. Good to remove. Spin it. There we go. Nice. Now, I'm not going to put this one on a stick because this is a new engine to me. I'm not familiar with it, and this could probably go pretty darn far so and pretty darn fast. So I don't want it causing havoc or starting a fire or anything of that nature. What we're going to do is called a static test. So we're just going to slap it on a big old piece of plywood, hot glue it down, stick a fuse in it, and see what happens. So at this point the propellant's at uh, about 15-20 minutes to set up. So I'm gonna put a clay bulkhead in there. Hammer that in. And we got a rocket motor ready to go. Again, this is of the lawn dart variety. <laughs> There's uh, no delay charge or ejection charge here, so this wouldn't work in your standard, standard 
uh, model rocket, you'd have to basically drill a little hole through the clay bulkhead here, put a delay mix, and then your uh, black powder ejection charge. But process is pretty simple from there if you do want to use an ejection charge. Now time to slap it on a piece of wood and see how this thing fires. So another thing I'm going to do here, I wrapped, basically encapsulated the fuse in some aluminum foil so that it won't actually, or at least theoretically, won't ignite the propellant until it gets down to the bottom of the grain. That way the, the whole grain ignites rather than just having it ignite from the top and burn its way down. And of course red, white, and blue visco fuse because this here is America. <laughs> so let's go give her a test. All right, we're out here in the windy, frozen tundra of the Northeast, and let's give this a fire. Stepping way back for this one. Holy shit! I don't know how well the camera picked that up, but that was loud. So, gave it some time to cool down. Oh, God damn. Now, as you could probably see from the footage there, it looked like it produced a really nice bit of thrust at first, and then it kind of died down. And one, I think that's kind of the way the propellant's cored. It's going to have more material to burn at the end there. But you can also see the throat diameter eroded pretty nicely so you know from from what it was you see we definitely had some major erosion there just out of curiosity so again you can see this is 0 0.3075 and the nozzle she opened up pretty well about 700 Wow. So I might have to change up my uh, my nozzle composition because clearly it is not holding up to those kinds of pressures. That's crazy. Well, thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you enjoyed. Just a bit of fun in the shop here, machining up some new rocketry tools and giving them a quick test. Pretty successful. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe. And if you'd like what we're doing enough on the channel that you want to support me, I do have a Patreon page set up. I'll link it somewhere here. And I will see you guys next time. Have a great one.